and welcome to Millennium Sports World. Today we will present local and international sports stories including MMA, golf, tennis, auto race, boxing, NFL, NHL, MLB soccer and some more sports news. So let's explore today's sports world. Two-time Australian Open champion Victoria Azarenka made it back to the quarterfinals at Melbourne Park for the first time since 2016 by beating Zulin 4-6-6-1-6-4 in a match that began late Sunday night and ended at nearly 2.20 am on Monday. I really focused on staying patient, staying focused on myself, said the 33-year-old Azarenka, who owned the title in Australia in 2012 and 2013. Because it was very, very easy to just lose that patience, lose control, because it was very tough out there. The third set began with six consecutive breaks of serve before Zhu finally was the first to hold, taking a 4-3 lead. But the 24th seeded Azarenka grabbed the final three games. She held, then broke to go up 5-4 when Zhu put a forehand into the net. Azarenka faced two break points while trying to serve for the victory. She managed to save both and closed it out with a cross-court forehand winner after 2 hours 40 minutes of play. The result ends a career-built run for the 87th ranked Zhu, who had lost in the first or second round in each of her previous 13 Grand Slam appearances. It all came so seemingly easy for Iga Swiatek last season. Two Grand Slam trophies, eight titles overall, a 37-match winning streak, a lengthy stay at number one in the rankings. Those accomplishments made everyone else expect constant greatness from Swiatek, which she can't do anything about. They also changed the way she approached big moments and the 6-4, 6-4 loss to Wimbledon Champion Elena Rybakina in the Australian Open's fourth round Sunday made Swiatek wonder whether she needs to reassess her outlook. I felt like I took a step back in terms of how I approached these tournaments and I maybe wanted it a little bit too hard. So I'm going to try to chill out a little bit more, Swiatek said. I felt the pressure and I felt that I don't want to lose instead of I want to win. So there will not be a showdown between Swiatek and number 7 seed Coco Golf in the quarterfinals at Melbourne Park. Instead, it will be Rybakina taking on 2017 French Open champion Jelena Ostapenko, a 7-5-60 winner against Golf, with a semi-final berth at stake. Andy Murray evened his Australian Open match at a set apiece and stood in a corner of Margaret Court Arena with his hands on his hips, staring up into the stands, where spectators were jumping and screaming, pumping their arms and waving blue and white Scottish flags. All of those fans and Murray himself could have been excused in that moment for thinking, here we go again. Except there would be no five-set thriller this time for Murray and his many backers. No after-midnight finish, no classic comeback and no victory. No the wear and tear of Murray's two previous unending, unyielding performances simply took too much out of his 35-year-old body and metal hip, leaving him with more than a half dozen blisters and an aching lower back during a 6-1, 6-7, 6-3, 6-4 loss to Roberto Batista Agat in the third round Saturday night. Shingo Kunida, the most successful player in the history of wheelchair tennis, announced his retirement from the sport on Sunday at the age of 38. The top-ranked Kunida won 28 Grand Slam singles titles and completed the career Grand Slam of all four majors when he won Wimbledon in 2022. I have been thinking about the retirement since my dream came true at Tokyo Paralympics, the Japan player said on social media. Last year, Wimbledon singles title for the first time made me feel that my energy was little left to compete. Kunida won 11 Australian Open titles with 8 wins at both Roland Garros and the US Open and one Wimbledon title. He also won 22 Grand Slam doubles titles and 3 singles gold medals at the Paralympics in 2008, 2012 and in Tokyo in 2021. He won a doubles gold medal in 2004. 
Grimacing in pain from his bruised cheekbone, Cristiano Ronaldo steadied himself before scoring from the penalty spot for his first goal in Saudi Arabia against a Paris Saint-Germain team featuring old foe Lionel Messi. Messi had already scored early in Thursday's exhibition game when Ronaldo was flattened boxing match style by PSG goalkeeper Keylor Navas after about 30 minutes in Riyadh. The city, which gained sporting prominence for hosting a World Heavyweight Championship boxing bout in 2019. It wasn't Anthony Joshua but Navas who caught Ronaldo flush in the face with his forearm under a high ball. Both went down like failed boxers. Ronaldo held his head, got back up, did a wide yawn as if to taste his sore left cheek, and sent his former Real Madrid teammate Navas the wrong way. By the end of the first half, Ronaldo's cheekbone was bright apple red, but he was all smiles after nating his second goal, smashing in rebound when his header came back off the post. Poking his tongue out, Ronaldo wheeled away in delight and was mobbed by teammates at the corner flag. When PSG star Kylian Mbappe checked on the state of Ronaldo's cheek just before the second half, Ronaldo milked the attention from France's World Cup star and pointed to the red mark. Mbappe smiled at him as if to say, you will be fine, and Ronaldo raised his arm in triumph like a heavyweight champion. Messi's Qatari backed PSG own 5-4 against a combined 11 of Saudi Arabian teams Al Nasser and Al Hilal, captained by Al Nasser's new signing Ronaldo, in front of 68,000 fans at King Fahd International Stadium. Although his team lost, Ronaldo aged perhaps the final installment of Ronaldo vs Messi as one of the greatest rivalries in soccer history resumed in an unusual location. The best shot of Victor Perez's life has set up likely the biggest year of the Frenchman's golfing career. Perez spanned a bunker shot back into the hole for birdie at number 17 and celebrated wildly on the way to shooting 6 under 66 for a one-stroke victory at the Abu Dhabi Championship on Sunday, earning him his third and easily biggest European Tour title. It was probably the greatest shot I have ever hit, Perez said. That wasn't the end of the drama in a crazy finish at Yas Island Links. Two strokes clear when teeing off at the par 5-18th. Perez drove into a fairway bunker, hit his second shot nearly into the water and two-putted for a bogey. Min Oh Lee, playing in the group behind, needed an eagle at the last to force a playoff and his third shot raised just past the hole then rolled slowly back down the hill to settle within a foot of the cup. Only then could Perez, watching the television in the scores hut, truly celebrate winning around 1.5 million at one of the tour's top events. Steve Stricker competed for the first time in three months and nothing changed. He began the PGA Tour Champions year by closing with a 7 under 65 for a six shot victory Saturday in the Mitsubishi Electric Championship at Hualalai. Stricker seized control with a 60 in the second round for a two shot lead. And with three birdies in four holes at the start, no one got closer the rest of the way. To win here, I don't know what kind of game I had coming into this week, Stricker said, breaking into a smile before adding, but it was pretty good. He now has four PGA Tour champions wins in his last five starts, ending last year with consecutive victories before taking off the postseason to enjoy the Wisconsin outdoors. Streaker was challenged only briefly on a gorgeous day on the Big Island. He still was two shots ahead of her charging Kane Tanigawa when Streaker made a breaking 10-foot birdie putt on the 13th and then followed that with a 45-foot eagle putt that dropped into the cup with perfect pace. From there, it was a battle for second place that no one owned. Steve Alker, the Charles Schwab Cup champion last year, closed with a 63 and earned a share of second place with Tanigawa, Mike Weir and Darren Clark, who missed an 8-foot birdie putt on the final hole. Stricker now has 12 career wins on the PGA Tour champions, the same number of titles he has on the regular PGA Tour. The action came early and fast in the Davy race of the IMSA VP Racing Sports Car Challenge on Saturday. 
Was things settled into a rhythm, Dan Goldberg and Billy Griffin logged their names into the record book as first ever race winners in their classes. Dan Goldberg capitalized on a first lap, first third miscue by pole sitter B.J. Gerg to take the overall and layman's prototype three-class lead that he never surrendered. Griffin, pole sitter in the GSX class, lost his lead on the opening lap but recovered the top spot on lap three and never looked back. Goldberg, driving the number 73 JDZ Motorsports Duquesne D08, started second in the 45-minute sprint race but had to check up when Gerg locked up the brakes on his number three junior third racing leisure JSP320 heading into turn one of the road course that leads to the infield section at Daytona International Speedway. Lance Wilson snuck briefly ahead in the number 30 St. Creech Motorsport Ligier until Goldberg recovered and took the lead for good midway through the opening lap. Brian Thines finished second in the number 77 US Race Tronics Ligier to the 2.808 second behind Goldberg. Gerg recovered after falling to the back of the field following the opening lap spin to finish third. Tucked in the back corner of an outpost paddock at Daytona International Speedway stood the chief executive of Ford, leaning against a cart having a casual conversation with the heads of the Wood Brothers racing team. Jim Fernie was wearing a fire suit and hardly looked the CEO part. On Saturday, he was a racer. The 60-year-old made his professional racing debut with a 12th place finish in the IMSA VP Racing Sports Car Challenge at Daytona. An accomplished historic racer, Furley drove a Multimatic Motorsports run Ford Mustang GT4 in the GSX class. It was the first sprint race in the new multi-class series that features bronze or silver rated drivers. Jamahal Hill showed his quality and then some sweet dreams captured the vacant Ultimate Fighting Championship light heavyweight title as he punished Glover Teixeira to a clear-cut unanimous decision in the UFC 283 headliner on Saturday at Junes Arena in Rio de Janeiro. Hill, the first Dana White's Contender Series graduate to strike UFC gold, swept the scorecards with 50-44 nods from all three cage side judges. Teixeira absorbed a horrific amount of punishment. He'll shredded the Brazilian's face with punches, elbows and knees, opening cuts near both eyes and spilling blood all over the octagon. He scrambled Tejera's circuits with head kicks on more than one occasion, switched stances to great effect and kept the John Heckelman protege at bay with a potent jab. He'll nearly finished it in the third round and again in the fourth, but his Brazilian counterpart refused to go away under the dearest circumstances. Teixeira offered a brief glimmer of hope for his supporters early in round five, where he executed a takedown and climbed to full mount. However, he'll escaped out the back door and relied on his jab, superior athleticism and lateral movement to avoid any further issues. Afterward, Tejeda, who has been one of the best 205-pound fighters in the world for well over a decade, announced his retirement after 21 years as a pro fighter. Tejeda will end his career with the most finishes and most submissions in UFC light heavyweight history. Liam Smith upsets Chris Eubank Jr. in four remarkable rounds to take the rivalry to a new level at the Manchester Arena on Saturday. Eubank Jr. floored twice in fourth round by Smith. Liam Smith twice blasted Chris Eubank down to the canvas and finished their fight in four astonishing rounds at the Manchester Arena. After a dominant third round from Eubank, Smith came flying out of the traps in the fourth, flooring his opponent for the first time 45 seconds into the round. Eubank was badly hurt and Smith put him down a second time within seconds, with the referee leaping in to call a halt even as Eubank tried to fight on. Smith's long rivalry with Eubank Jr. dates back more than seven years to a bitterly contested series of sparring sessions. It left the Liverpool man convinced he was the better fighter. Even once, he would stepped up to middleweight. Those suggestions were imperiously dismissed by Eubank Jr only enraging the former WBO titleist further. 
Patrick Mahomes pleaded with Chiefs coach Andy Ray to let him stay in the game on Saturday. He argued with trainers, assistant coaches and anyone else within earshot on the Kansas City sideline to let him play through an injured right ankle. I'm not coming out of a playoff game, Mahomes would say later, unless they take me out. Well, the Chiefs did, forcing him to get X-rays late in the first half of their divisional game against Jacksonville. But when they came back negative and Mahomes proved he could protect himself in the halftime locker room, Reid decided to let his all-pro quarterback back on the field, and he gamely led them to victory. Mahomes finished with 195 yards passing and two touchdowns, the second capping a 75-year drive late in the fourth quarter, and lifted Kansas City to a 27-20 victory over the Jaguars and a spot in the fifth straight AFC Championship game. Mahomes also vowed to be ready for next week against the winner of Sunday's game between Cincinnati and Buffalo. Right-hander Johnny Cueto's contract with the Miami Merlins allows him to earn up to $17.5 million over two seasons. The 36-year-old is guaranteed $8.5 million as part of the deal finalized Thursday. The agreement calls for a $6 million salary in 2023 and includes a $10.5 million team option for 2024 with a $2.5 million buyout. Cueto can earn up to $250,000 in each season in performance bonuses, $50,000 for 25 starts, $75,000 for 28 and $125,000 for 32, and $50,000 for 50 relief appearances, $75,000 for 55 and $125,000 for 60. He gets hotel suit on road trips. Quito joined a rotation that includes NLC Young Award winner Sandy Alcantara, Pablo Lopez, Trevor Rogers, Edward Cabrera, Braxton Jarrett, and Jesus Lozardo. Tyrese Maxey scored 15 of his 32 points in the third quarter and the Philadelphia 76ers, playing without Joel Embiid and James Harden, completed a perfect five-game row trip by beating the Sacramento Kings 129-127 on Saturday night. Maxey also had seven assists and six rebounds to help the 76ers overcome a 21-point deficit. Embiid and Harden arrested foot injuries, but the rest of the 76ers snapped Sacramento's six-game winning streak. Tobias Harris, Montrezl Harrell, and Georges Neon all had 17 points for the Sixers. That was a resilient win by our guys, 76ers coach Doug Rivers said. Everyone who played did something to help us win tonight. It's a team win. De'Aaron Fox had 31 points and 9 assists for the Kings. Harrison Burns had 27 points, going 6 for 9 from 3-point range. Kevin Witter added 20 points. Grant Williams scored a career-high 25 points. Jalen Brown had 27 and the Boston Celtics overcame the absence of leading scorer Jason Tatum to extend their winning streak to nine games by beating the Toronto Raptors 106-104 on Saturday. Boston's injury was worsened when guard Marcus Smart injured his right ankle in the final minute of the first half and had to be helped to the locker room. He did not return. Center Robert Williams stayed in the game after Brown collided with his left knee in the opening quarter. At halftime, Williams was ruled out for the second half because of a hyperextended knee. Malcolm Brogdon scored 23 points and Peyton Pritchard scored all of his 12 in the fourth quarter. The Celtics are unbeaten since the January 3rd defeat at Oklahoma City. Pascal Siakam had 29 points and 10 assists. Gary Trent Jr. scored 22 points and Precious Acuia had 17 points and 11 rebounds in his first start of the season. But Toronto lost its third straight. Bruce Boudreau has been fired as coach of the Vancouver Canucks, who are again on track to miss the playoffs with another underachieving season. The team announced the change Sunday, less than a week since President of Hockey Operations Jim Rutherford said major surgery was needed to fix the Canucks, who have only made the playoffs once in the past eight years. 
Rick Tuchet was hired as Boudreaux's replacement for the Vancouver team that has lost 28 of 46 games this season. This was not an easy decision to make but one that we felt was necessary for this franchise, General Manager Patrick Alvin said in a statement thanking Boudreaux for his contributions. He is the second coach Vancouver has fired in under 14 months. Boudreaux took over in December 2021 when previous coach Travis Green and general manager Jim Baining were let go 25 games into last season. Erling Haaland scored his fourth Premier League hat-trick of the season to lead Manchester City to a 3-0 win over Wolverhampton as Pep Guardiola's midweek message got through to the champions on Sunday. The Norway striker's three-goal burst in a 40-minute spell either side of Hafton lifted him to 25 for the season. That is more than any player managed last season when Mohamed Saleh and Son Young Min shared the golden boot with 23 goals. The quickest a player had previously scored four hat-tricks in the Premier League was former Manchester United striker Ruud van Nistelrooy in 65 appearances. It has taken Holland just 19 matches to achieve the feat as he continues to take English soccer by storm in his first season playing in the country of his birth. Guardiola had delivered a rocket to his players and the club's fans after the 4-2 comeback win over Tottenham on Thursday, saying they lacked the passion and desire to fuel second-place City's bid to claw back its deficit to Arsenal that stood at 5 points at kickoff Sunday. Daniel Yu reinforced what he called his love affair with Kitzbühel by winning the men's World Cup slalom in the posh Austrian ski resort for a second time Sunday. The Swiss slalom specialist ranked only seventh after the opening run, but he posted the third fastest time in the second. Yu then saw the top six fail to beat his leading time on the icy Gensplen course, including first round leader Manuel Feller who straddled a gate and failed to finish his home race. I really feel sorry for Feli. He is doing so well, he is always attacking and straddling is never nice. But I am very happy with my win, of course, you'll say it. Dave Redding, who triumphed last year to become the first British skier to win a World Cup race, posted the fastest time in the second run and improved from 16 to second place, 0 0.40 behind you. American skier Michaela Schifrin's pursuit of a record 83rd World Cup win will move on to the next stop on the circuit. Schifrin finished 7th in a Super G on Sunday, 0.62 seconds behind race winner Ranhild Moinkel to mark the third straight event in Cartagena this weekend that she missed out on the podium. Her next chance is to break a tie with former teammate Lindsay Vaughn for the women's Record will come in two giant slaloms at the Kronplatz Resort in nearby San Vigilio de Merem on Tuesday and Wednesday. Moinkel finished 0.30 seconds ahead of Cornelia Huter and 0.47 seconds ahead of Marta Bessino on the course that will be used for the 2026 Milan Cortina Olympics. Italian standout Sofia Gogia set out the race following a fall a day earlier due to soreness in her right knee. That's all in today's sports world. Keep watching Millennium Sports World for latest sports updates. Millennium TV US and Millennium News 24 network is transmitted and available to be watched free for all the TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IP TV, Worldwide Jago Media Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all types of informative and entertainment program. Thank you.